good evening one and all okay so uh, let me let me just move on right okay so by <clears throat> public demand some of the students they asked me can we do some problems in uh, springs okay and um, i just looking past a few problems there are some problems which are quite easier to solve okay, which is generally typically like uh, what is the extension what is the spring constant and so on which i am not doing it okay so i would like to do some problems which are bit tougher or which really demands something on the concepts okay and this one such problem which i had uh, given to students when i was coaching for the je mains at fiji so the problem reads like this, this is a problem from the book hcv hc verma i do not know whether you have gone through this book or not but uh, a wonderful book of course i am not promoting this book okay but uh, i should really say uh, verma says the way how he has designed your problems you know you just you need not go to any coaching or anything you just look into his book just start reading only from there i think uh, clearing your je will not be very difficult because the way how the problems he structures is wonderful okay now let us start working on this a block of 5 kg mass is suspended from the end of a vertical spring so i have a spring like this connected to a mass here this is your 5 kg mass just a minute there's no support Okay, supported by a five kg mass, uh, upon which the block is the spring is stretched by ten centimeters. So initially, okay, let let us do this one. Now initially, when you had the spring over here, this was the spring here, and uh, when no mass was added, this was the spring. Okay, when the mass is added, when the mass is added, this became the spring, which means what? It got stretched by five centimeters. It's got stretched by ten centimeters. Sorry, by ten centimeter. What was the load? Five kg. Now, from this sentence itself, I can understand, or I can get to know what is the spring constant. How do I find spring constant? What is the load applied? Load applied is five kg multiplied by ten. Okay, five into ten is nothing but the force which is given to you. This should now be equal to kx. Of course, it's minus kx, but I'm not relating the minus kx here. I'm just taking the magnitude. Okay. So therefore, now k I want to find. And uh, this I can write this as k into x. What is x here? x x is given by 10 centimeters. See this extension, right? So 10 into 10 power minus 2, so which means which means 50 should now be equal to 10 into 10 power minus 2 should be 0 0.1, 0 0.1, which means k should be equal to 50 divided by 0 0.1, which should be 500. Uh, what is the unit? Unit is Newton. Newton per meter. Okay. Now, so so far what we have done, I have not started the problem at all. I have not read the problem at all completely. I read only a part of it. Okay. This is a technique which is everyone should know. See, when you read a problem completely, two lines, three lines, five lines, and so on, there's a high possibility you might forget what was there in the first line. And again, some of you might have a starting problem. The better way is read the problem, and as you get the data. Okay, try to find out what can be found. See, he has not asked you what is the value of k anyway. Okay, I find it out. Maybe I think it might be useful. Let us see. The block is given a sharp impulse from below. So what I do is, it's already been hung like this as an extension. I give a pat here. Push it upwards like this. Right? Push it upwards. Impulse from below so that it acquires an upward speed of 2 meters per second. So that the speed which this acquires is 2 meters per second. Okay, now as a result of this, uh, how high will it rise? Now, when you give a pat here, what will happen? The spring will compress, the object will go, and the final state of it would be like this. Would be like this, right? It is already raised by a certain height. With respect to this position, the actual position it has raised here. With respect to this position, maybe I can say it has raised by a height h. Now you see, I have already coined the problem and I have returned a diagram. Most of the physics problems, it's always better to 
See to it that you write the diagram and then solve it. Okay, I have written all this. Now he is asking you what is the value of h? What is the value of h? Now how do we find? When I ask this question, some students give an incorrect answer. Okay, I usually what I do is I have taken problems in such a way but when I had given such problems to my students, what kind of response do I get? The simplest way about it was, sir, you gave some initial velocity to this. See, initially, the spring was not oscillating. It was addressed. The object was also addressed. You gave some velocity. As a result of it, what happened? The object went upwards. This is equal to saying, I have a particle in my hand. I just give a push. The particle goes upwards. What is the maximum height reached? Maximum height reaches. H is equal to U squared by 2G. Right. I hope you, have, you remember this. This is something which you have learned in projectile motion. Right. So maximum height reached by a projectile is equal to u square by 2g. Use this. Now u value is already given to you 4, 2, 2 square is 4, and g is 10. So substitute all the answers, you get 0.5 minus. But incorrect. Right. Now let us see what's the correct answer and what is the procedure. Now what we do is you cannot solve it by this method. Why I can't solve it? Whether I had used that formula, I can't use it here. Why you can't use this here? This is a misconception. You had a misconception saying that whenever a particle goes upwards, okay, you can easily apply u square by 2g. This can be applied only, 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 only if, if only one force acts on the particle. What is that force? Gravitational pull. Now, what about the object here? See, it's already hanging here, right? You give a compression here, you give a push over here. Now, as the mass keeps on going like this, won't the spring push it downwards? Right? In addition to gravity, you will also have a spring force, which is a restoring force. You will always try to push the object downwards, right? So as you keep on pushing it upwards, there will be a spring force you will be pushing it downwards. So therefore, your value of g that you have written here is incorrect. You cannot write like this. Right? Here g is constant. But here, here g won't be constant. Okay, so you cannot do my this method. So always remember, this method is applicable only when there is a constant acceleration. But here it's a variable acceleration. So you should not use your equations of motion. You should go with some other method. What are the other methods available? The first method, if whenever something is varying, that is acceleration is varying, is calculus. Okay, I am not going to teach you calculus here. Okay, the second method is by energy method. Work energy theorem, energy conservation theorem, okay, conservative forces. You, you can use any one of this because all are equivalent to each other. So let us use the total energy conservation, okay, our energy conservation theorem. So towards it, let us consider this configuration is A and this configuration is B. B, okay. Now, if this configuration is A, what is the total energy of the system in this configuration? Let us write. So EA, what is EA here? Now initially the mass is hung over here and I give a push, which means what? I have given some velocity, which means I have given some kinetic energy, right? So therefore, the mass has a kinetic energy, half mv squared. Then what else does it have? The spring has already been stretched. Initially the spring was very lazy, no stretching. Okay, now you put an object, so it's already been stretched, right? So therefore it has some energy into it. How do you say energy? Only because of that energy, the mass, the moment you remove the mass, the spring is again go to spring upwards, right? So therefore, you can say half a x square is nothing but the energy present in the spring. This is the total energy of the system. Then what you do? Then let us look at the second configuration, Eb. Hey, I missed something here. What about the potential energy of the mass? Think about it. See? Now, what I did was, I assume that x equal to 0 here. Okay, I put this as x equal to, that is your origin, where the potential energy is 0 at this point. Okay, if I go upwards, definitely there is some potential energy. So, therefore, the potential energy of this mass is equal to 0. Or if you want, I can write this as mg into 0. Okay, that's all I have. Or Eb. Let us look at Eb. Now, you gave a push. Now, it started compressing the spring. Okay, now this distance, what is x here? x is nothing but the initial elongation. x is this one. So therefore, what will this distance be? 
This will be h minus x because the whole length is h. Okay. So if I see, if I add h minus x plus x, you get this h here, right? I hope you're getting me. This is your h minus x plus x. So this, this distance plus this distance. When I add it, together I get the value of h, right? So therefore, this should be h minus x. Okay. So it has been compressed upwards by h minus x over here. So how do you find the, how do you write the energy over here? The energy is you lifted the mass from here to a height h, to a height h. So therefore, this should be mgh. Okay, remember, this is not mgh minus x. Why are not mgh minus x? Because you lifted the object from the origin here. From here, you lifted it upwards. How did you lift up? You gave a velocity here, so it went upwards. Plus, because we are looking at the whole system. What else do we have here? We have, do we have spring energy? Yes, obvious. Whether the spring is elongated or the spring is compressed, it will have an energy. Okay. Because this is a change in length. So I will write half k, half k into h minus x the whole square. This compression. Some students have a misconception here also. They say, sir, if a spring is expanded, you can say plus half k x square. If the spring is compressed, why shouldn't I write it as minus half k x square? Now, what is this half k x square? Half k x square. I don't have space. I'm writing it here only. Okay, half k x square. K is a spring constant which can never be negative. Half is always a positive. Then, how can you have half k x square negative? Now, what do you mean by x here? X is extension. Okay, so if you have expanded, extended downwards, let us say this is negative x, minus x. But here, since you have x square, it becomes minus x, the whole square becomes positive. Okay, so therefore, you whether you have a positive x or negative x, whether you are going downwards or compressing or elongating it upwards, whatever you do, okay, but still, this will always be a positive quantity. Okay, so now, coming back to this. See, we already arrived at all these things. So what about half mv squared? There's no half mv squared. Why no half mv squared? Because you gave a push here. The particle kept on going as, as long as it can compress the spring. Right? So beyond this, it cannot compress. The moment it cannot compress, that means the particle stays at rest here. Okay, and for at least for one microsecond. After one microsecond, instantly it starts coming down. But my question is, okay, how long does it stay is not my question. My question is to find out what is the maximum height reached by the particle. So, so now, so therefore, this energy should be equal to this energy. Because energy is conserved. No energy is lost. No heat energy is given. No light energy is given. So I will equate this to, I will write, A is equal to EB. Or in other words, I'll write half mv square plus half ax square is equal to mgh plus half k into h minus x the whole square. Okay. So what I will do is I will remove this half everywhere. Okay. I'll simplify this. Then I simplify this. What do I get here? Uh, can, I, can I remove something? No, I can't remove anything here. Right. Okay. So therefore, now what I will do, I will write this as, um, I'll remove half on both. I'll multiply this by two on both sides. So I will get this as mv square plus kx square is equal to 2mgh plus k into h minus x the whole square. Now let us solve this. Okay. So when you solve it only, you will get to know what mistakes, what we are doing and so on. Now let us substitute the values first. What is m? 5 kg. 5. Velocity. What's the velocity given? 2. Right? Is it 2? Yeah, it's 2. 5 into v square, 4. Plus k. We already found out the value of k. What is the value of k? k, 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 where is it? See, now it is useful. 500. 500. Extension, x. What is x here? x is this value, right? 10 centimeter which means x square should be, x is 10 centimeter, which should be 0 0.1 the whole square. Ah, wow, everything is numerical here. Quite easier to do it, right? 2 into m, what is m? m is 5 kg, 5. g, 10. h, I do not know. That's what is to be found out, h, okay? Plus k, 500 into h, what is it? I do not know, minus. X, X should be in meters, don't put 10 centimeter, okay? 0 0.1 the whole square. Wow, big equation. Ah, we need to solve this now. 
Let us see how easily we can solve. 5 into 4, 20. 20 plus 500 into 0 0.1 square. 0 0.1 square is 0 0.01. 0 0.01 multiplied by 500 is 5. 5. This should now be equal to 2 into 5, 10. 10 into 10 is 100. Okay. 100 H plus this is 500. Okay. I will expand this. 500 into H square plus 0 0.01. Do I need to expand this or not? Yeah, I need to expand it. Otherwise, I will not be able to solve this. Yeah, I put a bracket here. Huh? Minus 0 0.2 into 2AB minus 2 minus 0.2H. Right? So this is one more. I made it completely. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, now let us solve this completely. So this should now be equal to 100H. This is 25. 25 is equal to 100H plus 500H square plus 500 into 0 0.01 5 minus this 500 multiplied by 0 0.2. How much is it? Uh, 50 into 2 is 100 minus 100H. Wow. See how nicely it has been solved. Huh? This is 100H. This is minus 100H. Wow. Now it becomes easy for me. So in other words, 25 and this 5 when I throw it that side becomes 20. 20 is equal to. My pen takes us some time to write. Right? It takes some time. So I have to press and write it. 20 is equal to 500 H square. This goes away. So in other words, did I make any mistake? I made some mistake. No, 100 H minus 100 H goes away. 20 is equal to 500 H square. Okay. In other words, H square is equal to 2 by 50. Or maybe I will write this as 4 by 100. Yeah. Very easy for me to solve, right? So H should now be equal to 2 by 10. What is this 2 by 10? 0 0.2 unit meter. Or this should be equal to 20 centimeter. Okay. So therefore, the object is being raised to 20 centimeter or the height. What is this H? Yeah. Okay. The height to which the object has been thrown upwards is seen to be 20 centimeter. I hope this is clear for you. Thank you, friends, for watching this video. If you like this, do comment, share, and subscribe to my channel for more updates. This would really help me out to solve more number of problems. Of course, Either you can comment on which problem would you like to work on, or you can also say, you can just send me an email, okay? Or the best way is, because most of them do this in my email, and you can also do it directly like this.